Babble. <laughs> I can't believe I made a whole movie with this thing on. <laughs> yeah, does it look cool or? Doesn't feel cool, but if it looks cool, that's. Hey everyone, Michelle Alexandria. I am back from Comic Con. I took last week off to get back into the swing of my daily job, so. I haven't actually updated the site in a week. I got a, I have a lot of stories to actually upload, stuff on the con, movies to review, and a lot of other stuff. But today is Tuesday, July 30th, and that's the, it's the blessed, blessed day that Avengers Endgame is now available on the fabulous digital, on the Voodoo digital service platform and in 4K UHD. I'm still a little salty that Disney is not supporting uh, 4K on the Apple TV platform. I guess we're gonna have to wait till the Disney Plus service launches in October or November, whenever the hell it's gonna launch. Um, because all of that stuff is gonna be in 4K UHD. So I'm assuming at that point, um, everything on the Apple TV will be in 4K UHD, which means most of my Disney stuff should automatically update. But then it's Disney, so who knows? <laughs> um, anyway, so I was looking for, I've been looking forward to watching this digital stream for a while. Um, it, it just chats my butt that the physical copy uh, comes in two weeks, two weeks after the digital stream, and Disney's supposed to be sending me a physical copy at some point in the next few days. And I know me, I'll buy this digital stream and it won't work. And then, and then I'll get the digital copy a couple of days later and I'll be salty. But I had already pre-ordered it on Best Buy. But like a dummy, I went out and bought it this morning because I just couldn't wait to watch. So this is where I tell you that I only watched 90 minutes of it. I spot check uh, most of it. I didn't watch, sit down this morning, watch all three hours before I went to work. So I only watched 90 minutes of it and I just skipped around to check the quality of the stream. And I gotta say, I was a little disappointed in this release. I mean, it's big. This is the Avengers Endgame. It should be big. It should be bold. It should be bombastic. Or even it was in the theaters and the first thing that kind of chat that kind of really annoyed me was the fact that it was still that about so you get the black bars at the top and the bottom so half your screen is cut off and that just irritates me to know in these days and i don't i just don't and i'm going to mention this in every single video and for now on i'm just going to automatically downgrade a picture by like one four letter grade because we have 55 inch tvs these days 55 inch 4K TVs are kind of the norm now, so there's no absolutely no reason for 4K releases to still be in letterbox, letterbox format. At the very least, studios should actually give us the option to either watch stuff in full screen with maybe, in, you know, with the regular TV presentation that's a little slightly off, or just give us a full screen presentation and then let us choose between whether or not we want to watch something in letterbox or not. It's just annoying that we're forced to still watch letterbox crap on 4K. And what's going to happen when we get 8K's crap still going to be in letterbox with half your screen and half your real estate cut off? So that bugged me to no end. I thought the picture was really soft. It was really soft. It was really... Um, I didn't really notice any 4K crispiness, and this is the problem with streaming digital. I have a pretty crappy network, so I can never really tell if it's my network just showing stuff in HD or stuff that actually is 4K. And this is the other reason why I ended up keeping my Panasonic UB 820 because I, I just now want to only watch 4K uh, movies on 4K disc again because the difference is just night and day. It really is between stream quality and your physical media quality. So for all of those reasons, I was not particularly happy with this transfer. It was in a lot of boxing. I didn't really notice any 4K crispiness in any of the sequences that I watched in Spot Chat. There's no IMAX uh, sequences either, which I actually personally hate. I absolutely hate the aspect ratio switching because it actually uh, kicks, brings up my OCD-ness where I'm like, pick a ratio and stick to it. And the other problem with uh, switching aspect ratio, ratios is then when you actually see it in proper full IMAX full screen and then it switches back to IMAX, that's like a further slap in the face because then you actually notice the difference right away in your viewing in the quality of your viewing experience between a full screen and letterbox. Um, 
It has Adobe Atmos Mix on the Voodoo service, but again, I use the Sony HS9, HS9 F Adobe Atmos soundbar, so for me, it's kind of hard for me to actually properly judge an Atmos Mix. I thought the audio mix sounded great, what I heard of it. Um, the audio mix sounded great. The HDR quality, I thought it, there was like no real HDR goodness in this that I noticed. A lot of it was a lot of the cinematography was surprisingly drab. Like when I saw it on the big screen, it, it seemed to pop a little bit more. Um, but on on my TV, it's just a natural it's just a natural even tone throughout most of it. I didn't notice any. There weren't too many wow scenes that I saw where I was like, oh my god, that is absolutely amazing. It was just kind of like a natural tone, flat tone throughout most of it. So I wasn't too thrilled with how the HD the HDR impact on this picture. I'm really hoping once I get um, the physical disc in, that's going to improve a lot because my my 4K player has automatic tone mapping and all that good stuff. So so yeah, so from a picture quality, I would give the picture quality probably a C, and the audio quality I would give a C. The extras are kind of are really lame because the extras are. I really wanted to see the extras. I watched the extras this morning before I went into the office, and there's about there's only like five or six minutes of delete worth of deleted scenes. And what was deleted, I actually really loved the deleted stuff. I was like, why did you cut this out? There's this great deleted scene where they show all the Avengers kind of like taking the knee and doing like this when after Tony dies, and that was such a great little moment. I can understand probably why they did it because they see it would kind of be redundant for them to do that and then go straight into the funeral in the next shot. And it kind of feels a little too much. But I really like that little moment. There's a great little conversation, 30 second conversation between Tony and his dad that kind of wraps up that conversation. Um, there's a funny moment with Rocket saying, hey, laughing at the Avengers saying, where, where they're sitting around the table talking about the Battle of New York and Rocket's like, how long did it take you? And Black was like, oh, well, two or three hours. And Rocket just laughs at him and it's like, everyone knows you just destroyed the Shintari ship and it's the weakest army in the world. Everyone knows you just, you just uh, destroyed the ship and that's it. <laughs> so that was really funny. Then there's a 20-second clip between uh, not is it Rhodey between uh, Ro between Rhodey and Captain America where they're talking about Captain America, Steve crashing his ship? And he's like, I don't understand. Why did she crash the ship? And he's like, there were bombs aboard. And then he just kind of looks at him and goes, hmm, bombs? Why didn't you just jump out of the plane? And you're like, oh my God, that is so simple. <laughs> oh, so, I was, so I really love that moment as well. Um, it's still Avengers Endgame, and I love this movie to death. So, um, I'm looking forward to getting the actual physical media in, either hopefully from Disney, hopefully follow through and send it to me in the next few days. I'm not holding my breath because, you know, seven out of ten times Disney will follow through, the other three times they won't. And they normally screw me on the really big ones, like Avengers Endgame. So we'll see if I get that in. But, yeah, I just wanted to do a really quick video review of Avengers Endgame. And if, in case you're wondering, I'm going to start trying to tell you what equipment I'm using to watch this stuff on because that's the one question I have for a lot of 4K reviewers is what kind of equipment they have. So I'm actually watching this on my 55 inch LG B7 OLED TV. I have, and then I have, like I said, a Sony HT9F Dolby um, surround bar set up. And when I move, I'm actually going to get this Akio, uh six channel surround sound package um, when I move. And actually you can get that thing for like 700 bucks. So yeah, I'm getting that when I move. So I'm gonna have a real live, real four scale uh, Dolby Atmos set up in my condo, wherever I end up moving to I actually have a place picked up. But So I'm moving at the end of August and I have all that stuff set up really nice. And then, uh, and then my 4K player from when I finally watched this on 4K is the Panasonic UV820. Yes, people, I ended up keeping that player. 
Um, so because I know me, I'm gonna re I would regret returning it. So I kept it, and I love that player anyway. Even though I don't really watch too many 4K movies, and I keep looking over at it for some reason. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have a lot of videos coming up in the next week. A lot of post Comic Con stuff that I still gotta post. I mean, I have interviews with uh, with DJ Quill, Quills, uh, Trisha Hefner, and all these people, and the cast. Uh, Creep Show, Van Helsing, um, V, um, and, and some other stuff. Oh, uh, what's the Kristen Bell show on NBC? Uh, the Good Place have interviews with that cast. Um, so yeah, I, and, I, and I still want to tell some Comic Con stories as well. So anyway, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.